All right, Powerhouse panel is back with us this morning. Full panel, Amir Ben O'Donnell Jackson and Amy Tarkanian all with us. Uh, let's get right into uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. She uh, has arrived safely in Mexico. She was in uh, Guatemala. Mexico is the second stop on her, uh, her tour here. Uh, she met with the president of Guatemala yesterday, spoke to the press for the first time in 76 days, addressing the root causes, by the way, the root causes of immigration, okay? And according to her, this is how we are going to stem this problem in Guatemala specifically take a listen. The United States will con create an anti-corruption task force, the first of its kind. Our Justice Department, our Treasury Department, and our State Department will work together to conduct investigations and train local law enforcement to conduct their own. Our task force will support Guatemalan prosecutors, including um, DC and listen, no corruption. Corruption does not know borders. Amy, uh, I, she just doesn't seem like she's ready for prime time, does she? Um, we're in the middle of withdrawing the final troops from Afghanistan right now. Troops have been there dying for 20 years uh, in Afghanistan, in Iraq. We've been trying to train forces there. It's really not easy, and she wants to train Guatemalan police and task force and whatever down there to to prevent people from traveling north to the border. Does this sound like something that's going to be? That's a quick fix. No, no worries. No, not at all. It's ludicrous. And the fact that she's also claiming that this is the very first you know, of its kind. No, it's really it's not. Um, you can't take credit for wanting to go into other countries and, and try to better them, um, enforce our our thoughts on how things should be done. Um, this is not going to work. We've seen this before time and time again. You can't just throw money and push democracy onto another country who pretty much just wants to take advantage of the situation. And the fact that this is literally, it, it's a bribe. It, this is the way for them just to, to pay off this government um, and say, hey, look, now it, it looks like we've done something on the outside, but we really haven't fixed the problem. So it just makes both countries look like they're actually doing something when they're not. Yeah, we've got a, a congressman coming on the show in just a little bit. Now, I'm curious about this because because she is the vice president, Donna, of the United States. She's not the vice president of Guatemala. I, it's kind of offensive that, that the first time she confronts the crisis 76 days after being appointed the person, the task, the, the point person to manage the crisis, uh, she actually does so from a foreign country, from Guatemala, and not the U.S.-Mexico border where the problem exists. Well, because she doesn't want to correct the problem. She doesn't want to fix the problem. You know, the problem is simple. Reinstate the policies that the Trump administration put in place. That's, that stops the problem. But instead, we want to go all, all around this kind of a scenario where it's about you, it's about me, it's about me controlling your country. You know, they don't want to fix the problem, but they want to look like they're fixing the problem. So, you know, I don't believe anything she says or anything she does. And um, this just shows that she's not worthy to be a vice president. Amir, the Voting Rights Act uh, is the Democrats' bill to uh, reform voting before the 2022 midterms, but especially before the 2024 election. Uh, Jen Psaki was speaking to a packed press briefing room. Uh, this is the first time that the briefing room was at full capacity since March of 2020, really since before the pandemic started. And she addressed that op-ed that West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin wrote over the weekend and the fact that he will not be voting to support the Voting Rights Act, uh, which has made uh, the administration, Joe Biden in particular, pretty upset. Take a listen. I think where we are at this point is uh, clearly uh, Senator Manchin has stated his point of view in his opinion piece uh, over the weekend, uh, which many of you, it sounds like, have read, uh, as did we. Uh, but the president's view is that uh, we need to move forward not just with the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, but also with legislation uh, like the For the People Act, uh, which enjoys, I should note, broad support for, from the American people. <laughs> I don't know where she got that from. It does not, it does not enjoy broad support from the American people. But I thought it was interesting, uh, Amir, the, the senator said he believes this bill will divide the country. He wrote that in his op-ed. So uh, my question, do you think Democrats at this point have any leverage to get this bill passed in the Senate? No, I, I don't think they do, Rob. And I think that, uh, you know, unless they, they try to do some sort of maneuver regarding the filibuster, and now that gets back to Joe Manchin taking that, that position, saying that he's not in favor of 
uh, of blowing up the filibuster. But what he said in his op-ed was he wasn't in favor of eliminating the filibuster. He didn't say anything about uh, adjusting it in some way, such as re reducing the number of votes to, to get cloture or doing some carve-outs like reconciliation or judicial appointments, which aren't subject to filibuster, uh, or going back to a speaking filibuster. These are all things that he talked about back in March when he spoke to Chris Wallace and he spoke to Chuck Todd, right. and he said that he'd be open to, to, to adjusting it. So, uh, so I guess it still remains to be seen. And I think that Chuck Schumer is going to really be pushing hard now to make some adjustments to the filibuster short of eliminating it so they can ram through this uh, this ridiculous election reform bill that does not, excuse me, that does not have, uh, you know, broad support from the American uh, community. Uh, Amy, I want to talk about this. Um, the, an FBI task force, we're just learning uh, overnight, was able to kind of turn the tables on that Russian uh, cyber hacking group, uh, Dark Side. They hacked the Colonial Pipeline last month. It, it, in the, it affected every American because gas prices skyrocketed. In California, I know you're out west, Amy. In California, they were almost $6 a gallon last week. Uh, in many parts of the country, they're over three. Some parts of the country, they're over four. Um, but about $2.3 million uh, was recovered. Do you think the administration, and, and I think this is something that, that the Trump administration could have looked at as well, but should the Biden administration go a step further and, and lump in cyber terrorists with actual terrorists? Because think about it. It was a pipeline this time. What if it's our power grid? People could die if, if something like that were to happen. Do you think they should do that and, and take that extra step? Yes, they should. In fact, my former next door neighbor it used to work for the FBI, and he actually um, went to the casinos and expressed that concern, that very concern with the power grid and the fact that there needed to be a lot of changes made and a lot of upgrades made in order for, for the casino industry to be safe um, alone. Uh, the fact that we just realized that this morning there was the, the web host, Fastly, that was possibly hacked. It was down for a short time. It had, I mean, tons of websites that were down. The New York Times, CNN. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it's it's ironic on the timing that once you know you just mentioned that the FBI had seized 2.3 million in Bitcoin uh, to this dark side group. Um, it, I don't know. Were they involved in this one? We have yet to find out. And I think it's confusing to like I woke up this morning and I was like, they got it in Bitcoin. Like I think that's confusing to a lot of people. By the way, don't forget these these companies, you know, Colonial Pipeline, they've got insurance to pay these. That's why they can pay ransoms, which they shouldn't be doing, in my opinion. But what about the individual? What what if one of us gets hacked? What if one of you out there gets gets uh, cyber hacked and, and there's a, a ransom demand for whatever you've got in your savings account? That's scary. Uh, and that's something the administration right. needs to look at. Uh, hold on, Amy. We've got to we've got to leave it right there. We'll pick this back up top of the hour. But we have a special panel coming up uh, 